The Lord be with you. O God, as we, your people, have once again gathered, so fill us in this place more and more with your presence. And help us to be open to the move of your spirit, that he so might direct our thoughts and our hearts to truly offer ourselves in worship to you, that in all that we do hereafter may be done to your honor and to your glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. presence on the second Sunday of the new year and the first Sunday after the Epiphany which we celebrate as the baptism of our Lord. Our liturgy continues on page 98 with the opening sentence for the Epiphany. For the God who said out of darkness light shall shine has caused his light to shine in our hearts the light which is knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed Lord and Father, we have assembled.
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Please be seated for the reading of the Old Testament lesson. A reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth, and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, 
who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to no idol. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them, the word of the Lord. The appointed Psalms, Psalm 29, found on page 502 of the Book of Common Prayer. Psalms 29, found on page 502, the Book of Common Prayer. We'll see the verse in the alternate with a deliberate pause at the asterisks in each verse. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord breaks to see the trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, Glory! The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessings of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it's now and shall be forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of the second lesson. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, ten, thirty-four to forty-three. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with the power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear. 
not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testified about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. According to Matthew, the third chapter, beginning at the thirteenth verse. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting upon him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my son, the beloved, in whom I am well pleased. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise Christ. To Christ.
Some words from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 17. After Jesus came up out of the water, suddenly the heavens were opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending and alighting upon him. Then a voice from heaven declared, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Suddenly there was a voice from heaven that declared, This is my Son, the Beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Can any of you remember your baptism? Anybody remembers his or her baptism? Were you baptized? Yes. So why can't you remember it? Can any of you remember what was said or promised on your behalf? You have some idea? Over the course of the years, there is usually for many people this big preparation for baptism day. We got to get our 20 God parents. Make sure our clothes are right and tight. And then we have to make sure we get that darling almost comparable to a wedding garment for the infant. But it seems like after all of this, On that particular day, it all ends right there. Anybody celebrates birthday? Why we celebrate birthday? Remember when we were born? When last have you celebrated your baptismal anniversary? Hmm. Hmm. Let's do the comparison of the two. How long will we celebrate birthdays? One day birthday celebrations will come to an end. When will we stop celebrating baptismal anniversaries? Do you realize that baptism signals us being born, which means it is the beginning of a new life that will last. But yet we place more emphasis on the things that are temporal while we just keep baptismal at the front. Isn't that interesting? We declare as Christians that in baptism we are buried. You know who you bury? The dead. So you know what we are essentially saying as Christians? That we are dying to an old life. And we are beginning a new life, yes, with who? So we are buried in Christ. And we are made alive. So with that in mind, are we living the baptismal life? Or are we more focused on the birthday life? And another question for our consideration. Since your baptism, is the Father pleased with how you have lived out those baptismal promises? Since you have been baptized, is God pleased with the way we have lived out the life of baptism? One of the things I've discovered in life when it comes to a child-parent relationship, I cannot explain why it happens, but it just seems to happen. 
that a child always seems to be about pleasing their parents. You ever seen that? Anybody used to do that song, clap hands for mommy, tell daddy come? And what the child does? And then their faces, because guess what they figure they are doing? They are making their parent happy. In the same way when they are doing foolishness and we have to chastise them, you also see that in their face because they have realized that they have disappointed the one who they sought to please. As we hear the voice from heaven today, guess what God is saying? That's my boy. I am proud of him. But as I read this, I had to look again and I had to keep flipping through. What has Jesus done for God to be pleased with him? You read that gospel today? The only thing Jesus did was go into the waters of baptism and come out. And guess what God says? That's my boy. Usually we are proud of our children when? When they do something. But that isn't always the truth. The day your child was born, how did you feel? Were you proud of them? What did they do? They didn't hit a lick. And you say, that's my boy or that's my girl. Think of it. They haven't done anything and we give them a whole house to live in. We have a whole lot of baby things we welcome them with and they do nothing yet. And guess what we have to do to be pleasing in God's eyes? Simply be his child. Now, not all the time we live up to our father's expectations. But you know why God is pleased with Jesus? For the same reason he is pleased with you and me. That Jesus is his son. We are told that Jesus is at this river of baptism. The heavens are open, the Spirit descends upon him, and this voice declares, That is my beloved child. And as we think of it, anybody has ever had their child perhaps performing in some sporting event or some drama or play? You ever had your child there? And what is the child often doing as they're about to go and do whatever they do? Who are they looking for? Why do you think they're looking for you? Could they hear your voice all the time? But just the fact that they could, that's enough. And I want us to understand this this morning. That for far more valuable than money and things is your presence or your time and encouragement that you give to a child. Because them things one day will, but they will always remember that mommy and daddy was always there for me. And sometimes when they see you in the crowd, they say, see my mommy, see my daddy? We're yours. <laughs> Children say that, you know. Because they like to say, my mommy is the best mommy in the whole wide, wide world, and my daddy is the best daddy. You see them there? Guess who they're here for? Jesus is not baptized for his sins. Because, as we know, Jesus is without sin. But here at the baptismal river, God is affirming him and empowering him for the mission that is ahead of him. We thought that God's Spirit alights on him, and guess what happens at our baptism? We invite the Spirit to rest upon the child. 
And if we remember the words when Jesus spoke it in the temple, he quoted Isaiah 61. Remember what he said the Spirit of the Lord came to do? To anoint him so that he may proclaim the good news. That he may give sight to the blind, that he may help to set the captive free. And then we hear the writer of Acts today declaring and affirming that when he says, that this God, this Jesus who you crucified, the only thing he did during his time on this earth, he went about doing good and healing, guess how many? All who were oppressed by the devil. And the reason he was able to do it, the writer ends, for God was with him. And recently I asked some young people, what is baptism for you? And I was rather impressed with the responses. One said that baptism means that we bond with God. Another one says that it is the opportunity for us to be with God. And another one said, it is us starting with God. And it is on that last point I want us to consider. And it is quite correct when the person said we start with God. But when it comes to baptism, sadly, I must say among many of us as Christians, at the baptismal font it starts with God, and at the baptismal font is where <laughs> It ends with God. We hardly do anything to let the world know that we belong to God. For many of us, it is only a matter of what we call ceremony. But baptismal calls us up to a life where we are to live out our Christian witness. And is anybody here who was given a baptismal candle at your baptism? Can any of you still find that candle? And it's interesting how we take our anniversary cake and we put that in the freezer and tell forever and a day. <laughs> but something as important as our birth in Christ. We probably didn't have that down on the dump pile up there in Blue Hills. But anybody remembers the words that come along when we give you those candles? We say, receive the light and walk as a child of light. And then the response by the congregation, if you don't believe me, you could go to page, I think it is 279 maybe. He says, let your, oh, you all remember now, so that what? Who, who are the men we're talking about? Just the ones here in church? Let all the world see the good in you. So that what? I ask the question again. Is God pleased with how we have been living our baptismal promises? Can we truly say that the light of Christ has been shining in us? You heard the, new, the Old Testament lesson for today? It says that God has chosen you, guess what? To be that light. He was talking about a Savior who was coming, but if we are in Christ, the same purpose that Christ has come here for is the same thing that we ought to be doing. And he says, one thing we ought to be about is promoting justice. And then later on he says, we are to be the light to who? To the nations of the world. I cannot help but ask the question again. Are you fulfilling your baptismal call? Are you letting God's light shine for the world to see? 
Or are we like those who are taking our light and hiding it under the basket? You see, for many of us, we only see baptism as something in that moment. And we fail to see a connection between baptism and our mission. You believe that we are baptized because we are declared to go out there and declare God? And we are reminded of our baptismal promises as a baptismal people. people. Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Because we always end the service and we tell the people of baptism to do what? Go in peace to love. You know what serve me? Is serving and sitting the same thing? Is serving and doing nothing the same thing? So if we are a people of baptism and we are doing absolutely nothing to advance God's church and God's kingdom, God's message, I encourage you to rethink your claim. Because to be a baptized member is not to be passive, not to be idle. And it doesn't matter whether we are young or old, able or disabled, rich or poor, healthy or ailing. Each one of us has been chosen by God to do the work that God has given us to do. And God has chosen me as he has chosen you to join him in changing this world. And when it comes to our mission and our relationship with God, there are only two types of people. It is either we are for God or we are against God. And if you are not doing anything for God, it simply means that you are simply working against God. Because how else will the world know God except through us? But the good news today is, for those of us who do not remember our baptism, who do not remember the promises made on our behalf, we will have another opportunity in a little while to renew those vows. To be reminded of whose we are and who we are. And I pray that at this time when we say those words, they wouldn't be like how we Anglicans traditionally do. We just say things that roll out of the top of our head because we've been so accustomed to doing them so long. The Lord be with you. See, I know you was going to respond. <laughs> but that's what we Anglicans do. Why are we saying, and also with you? I know it was going to happen. <laughs> the same thing when we are in the Eucharistic prayer, and sometimes you say, through Jesus Christ our Lord, what do we say? Amen. It ain't time to say amen. <laughs> but once we hear Jesus Christ, it is automatic. We say amen. For this time when we declare our baptismal promises, that they will not merely be words that we recite, but words that we truly reflect on, words that comes from the heart. Where this time it will be a reminder of the commitment we are making, not to the priest, not to the church, but to Almighty God. Remember what we said just early in the service? This God knows what? The secrets. You can't hide nothing from Him. You can tell everybody when you promise to do, them some, do something for them, say, oh, I forget. I was busy. But remember, there's a God who is always writing. Baptism is God's means as Jesus declares, as fulfilling his righteousness in all people who will believe. 
Jesus does not enter these waters of baptism for any sin that he has committed. But as a means of us be experiencing the righteousness of God. Isn't that what was read in Isaiah's lesson today? That this God will declare us righteous. Because as far as this human flesh goes, if we try righteousness on our own, we will continue to fail. Because as Isaiah describes it, our righteousness are nothing more or less than filthy rights. And in fact, in Romans chapter 8, Paul reminds us that for in this flesh, it is impossible to please God. And only when Jesus is truly dwelling within, and I think I refer to it last week in one of those sermons, there were so many these past two weeks, I almost forget him. After we would have received him at the order, what do we say? Oh, blessed Jesus, my Savior. That is why Jesus comes and that's why God sends him in the waters of baptism. And only when he, we dwell in him and he in us will we be ever able to do what's pleasing to God. As Jesus came up of those baptismal waters, suddenly the heavens were opened and the Spirit of God descended upon him and alighted upon him. And then there was this voice from heaven that said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. It is a reminder that in baptism, that is not merely something that we as a people do, but it is always a mark of our identity and our identification in God. Reminding us who we are, children of God. And whose we are, a child of God. We are God's beloved children. And by the power of the same Spirit who rested upon this Jesus. And in the name of this same Jesus. May we always be able, through Christ, to do what pleases God. In his name, God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Turn to page 263 in our book of Common Prayer. As we now renew our baptismal vows, reflecting on what God has done for us in Christ and who he has called us to become through the baptism of Christ our Lord. Let us now give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the, the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by your Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death, 
By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship in him in faith. We pray that all who have passed through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, now and forever. Dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him to new life. Let us now renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully by, in his holy Catholic Church. Do you now declare and promise that you will, with the help of God, live your life in the faith of Christ into which you were baptized? Do you believe in God the Father Do you believe in Jesus Christ, is the Son of God? God the Holy Spirit. Will you continue the apostles' teaching and fellowship in the breaking of the bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil? and repent whenever you fall into sin? I will. Will you be a witness in your daily life to God's saving work in Christ? I will. Will you seek and serve Christ by loving your neighbor as yourself, remembering that every person is loved and valued by God? I will. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and his love.
We continue on page 267, followed by page 124 for the greeting of peace. God, the creator of the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us faithful to our calling now and forever. Amen. We are the body of Christ. By one spirit we've been all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, church. We welcome all of you to our service today. Whether you are sitting here in the sanctuary or watching us on Facebook or YouTube, you are indeed welcome. We welcome an Honorable Josephine Connolly, who's here with us again today. She's a regular member, but we welcome her anyhow. <laughs> Anyone visiting for the first time today? Stand and tell us your name and where you're from. Uh, my name is Sandra, um, my husband Will, and we're from Alberta, Canada. Oh, you're running from the cold? <laughs> yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Please be reminded to, oh, sorry. Welcome. Please remember to bring your books of common prayer and your hymnals to church with you on Sundays so that the ones that we have in the back can be used for our visitors. On that note, there are books of common prayer and hymnals for sale in the parish office at $20 each. Please see any of the ushers or myself after mass to get one. Sunday school will resume next week Sunday as well as all of our youth activities will resume on Friday afternoon beginning with brownies and guides at 5.30 and Joshua Generation and CYM at 7 p.m. Prompt pick up at 9 p.m. for the children, please. Also, there is a section on your envelopes for Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School will resume this summer in Providenciales and South Caicos. So please make continuous contributions towards Vacation Bible School. Stewardship envelopes are available for collection in the east wing of the church. Please take yours and use them. If you don't see a set and you want a set of envelopes, please contact either Jillian Delancey or myself. On behalf of our rector and vestry, we extend a thank you to all of those who organized, assisted, and helped with the Youth Fund Day yesterday. The kids had a ball. They did not want to leave. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Also, to those who decorated and helped, decorated, de helped with decorating for Christmas, thank you. The church is beautiful. But it's time to take these decorations down. So anyone who is willing to help and assist with taking the decorations down, 
please send me a message and I will be also oh happy to arrange a time for you to come and assist. Please see the bulletin for all other notices. Remember in your prayers, the sick and shut in, those who are bereaved and mourning the loss of loved ones, and our students studying abroad. Anyone celebrating birthdays or anniversaries this week? Together we will pray with our sisters and brother.
On page 126, we continue with the prayer over the offerings. Let us pray. Father, we come to you these gifts which you have given us. This prayer is for our proper preface, the preface for Epiphany on 127 and Eucharistic prayer form A on 131. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your to dwell among us as man, he revealed the radiance of his glory and brought us out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Creator God, we give you thanks because in your loving wisdom you brought all things into being and are truly worthy of praise from every creature you have made. Again and again we have turned away from you, yet in every age your steadfast love has called us to return. For it is your eternal purpose to put new life into all things and to make them holy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who took our human nature upon him, you have redeemed him the world from the bondage of sin. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, you have gathered a people to yourself to make known in every place his perfect offering which he made to the glory of your name. Hear us, therefore, Father, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the grant that these gifts of bread and wine may be unto us, his body and his blood. For on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shared for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. And so, Heavenly Father, rejoicing in His holy incarnation, His blessed passion, and His perfect sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. His mighty resurrection from the dead, his glorious ascension into heaven, and looking for his coming in glory, we offer you this bread and this cup. We pray that you will accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, and grant that all who eat and drink of the body and blood of your Son, our great High Priest, may be renewed by your Holy Spirit, and be one body, one spirit in him. Let faith and love increase in us. Unite us with all bishops, all other ministers of your word and its sacraments, and with the whole people of God, both living and departed, whom you have made for yourself. Confirm us, Lord, in holiness, that we may be found ready to join the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Joseph, a spouse, Blessed Monica and John the Baptist, the holy apostles and all your saints, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes again, forever giving you thanks and praise through him from whom all good things do come, with him and in him and through him, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father Almighty, with all who stand before you in earth and in heaven in songs of everlasting praise. Body of Christ. Though we are 
My brothers and sisters in Christ, draw near and receive his body which he gave for you, and his blood which he so freely shed for you. Remember that Jesus Christ died especially for you. Come now and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Grant, gracious Lord, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us.
48, we sum up our prayers of thanksgiving to God in the third post-communion prayer. 148. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To you, to you and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with the good news of his kingdom. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord.
O God, by that same Spirit that descended on Jesus in his baptism and raised him victorious from the dead, may the same Spirit fill our lives with this newness and send us now into the worlds to be that light that shines in the midst of darkness as we continue to witness to his peace and a saving power through Jesus Christ, our Lord.